right. Let's make a start. Um, welcome to the 535th Council meeting of Canterbury Regional Council. Uh, this morning we're having a hybrid meeting with some councillors online and some other councillors physically present in the room. Um, please, uh, as I already said, please don't use the chat function. Um, if you wish to speak, um, just raise your electronic hand or your physical hand um, and uh, we will see you. Um, I would like to invite uh, Councillor Craig uh, Pauling to do a mihi whakatau. Thank you, Craig. A tēnei te ruru te koukou mai nei ki hau, mai whiti piti ki hau, mai raka raku tūpoko nui o te ruru te reko, he pō, he pō, he ao, ka watea, a ti hei mauri ora. A te mihi tua tahi mihi ki nga atua kaha rawa, a hoa mai o kaha hoa mau aroa ki a mātou i tēnei wā, a ina wā katoa hoki. A rātou ki a rātou, tātou ki a tātou, nga kanohi ora, ko tai mai nei, i tēnei kaupapa, i tēnei hui, Kai tēnā koutou. Ki nga kai kaunihera, nga kai mahi, o te kaunihera nei. Ki nga limo te hāpore e mātaki nei, tēnei mi te ao koutou. Pai, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. He karakia timataimo o tātou nei hui. Ka haia te ata, ka hāpara te ata, ka koru ki te manu, ka wariri te kutu, ko te ata nui, ka horaina, ka taki du mere he pō, he pō, he ao ka wotea tihei. Uh, thank you, Councillor Pauling. There is uh, a late report that you should have got on your tables. It's an 8.2 item. It will have come in your email at, as well. So I hope you've all got that. Thank you very much. Um, we have some apologies noted. Councillor Megan Hands is an apology. Tumu Taya, you're not an apology because you're here. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. I had already seen you. Um, is there any other apologies we need to note? All right, we're moving on to conflicts of interest. Are there any conflicts of interest today? Uh, Councillor Claire Mackay. Yes, thanks. I will declare a conflict of interest with today's decision for addressing the farming in the Waimaka Early District. Thank you, Claire. Uh, Councillor Vicky Sarah. Sorry, I'm perceived bias. So is that does that come under this section? Yeah, so I would declare a perceived bias because I've made a submission on PC7. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Southworth. Councillor Peter Scott. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I've <coughs> um, declared a conflict of interest over my shareholding in Opua Water. Uh, so I will be pushing back from any discussion at all, any decision to be made on Plan Chain 7. I thank you, Peter, Councillor Scott. Uh, Councillor Phil Clearwater. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I um, declare a conflict of interest too. Um, I, due to my previous uh, submission when I was a city councillor, um, I will listen to the meeting, but I won't take part in the meeting. Uh, thank you, Claire, Councillor Clearwater. Uh, Councillor Ian McKenzie, I understand you have got a conflict of interest. Yes, I, I have a, a small area of conflict uh, as I used to be the chairman of the African Irrigation Scheme and as such submitted on, uh, I think it's part of Section 13 changes, so I won't take any part in this proceeding. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, when we come up to that, oh, Councillor Nicole um, Marshall. Uh, just for the purposes of daylighting, across 2015 and 16, as an ECAN hydrogeologist, I helped organise the collection of groundwater levels from the Waimakariri district. These data were used in the modelling to support the Plan Change 7 process. I was not involved in the Plan Change 7 process as a staff member beyond organising the collection. I was not involved in the collection of the levels. I did not interpret, analyse or model any data or review or have input into any technical reports while I was a staff member at Environment Canterbury. I have consulted with legal counsel and am con confident that given how far removed I was from the work done to support the plan change, my involvement does not constitute the conflict of interest. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Marshall. Was there anybody, uh, other councillors or two more wishing to make a comment? 
All right, we'll move on from conflict of interest. Thank you very much. Um, there's no public forum today. There's no deputations and there's no petitions, as I understand it. We do have the minutes of the council meeting held on Thursday, the 21st of October, 2021. Are there any issues with those minutes that anybody would like to raise? Uh, Councillor uh, McKenzie. Uh, Liz. Oh yeah, um, just wanted to clarify whether the um, typographical error, um, which says um, hypercentral instead of hyperspectral, um, can that be corrected please? Uh, yes, I'm sure that can be corrected and thank you very much for pointing it out. Um, if, would you like to move, who would like to move that the count, the record, the minutes are a true and correct record of the meeting, moved by Councillor Grant Edge, seconded by Councillor Elizabeth McKenzie. All those in favour, please say aye. There being nobody against, that's carried. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, matters arising, did we have any matters arising? No, there's no matters arising to report back today. Uh, we're up to committee reports, um, 7.1. Uh, I'll hand over to Councillor John Sunkel. Would you like to speak to this report? Um, thank you. Uh, this was a civil defence meeting, group meeting held on the 18th of October. Uh, at this point, purely procedural to allow us to go to uh, public excluded for matters I will raise in public excluded of this meeting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Sunkel. Uh, so, Councillor Sunkel is moving that we receive those unconfirmed minutes. Uh, would you like to second that, Nicole Marshall? Seconded by Councillor Nicole Marshall. All those in favour, please say aye. Uh, there being nobody against, that's carried. Thank you very much. Um, now we're up to page 26. Is this item eight, matters for council decision? This is the independent hearing panel's recommendation on plan change seven and plan change two. Um, we are going to uh, have staff speak, Andrew. We're going to get Andrew Parrish to speak to um, this report. Um, and then there might be some questions. And we're also going to get uh, a staff person to give us some briefing around our specific role in this decision making. So first of all, we'll hand over to you and we'd like to, to hear from you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Morena councillors. Uh, I'm very pleased today to bring you um, the hearing panel's report and recommendations on Plan Change 2 and Plan Change 7. Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2 were notified in 2009, following 3.5 years of collaborative work by the Waimakariri and Otop Zone Committees. It takes a whole community to create a plan change like Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2. And I just want to call out and um, and, and pay homage to the number of hours that our community has spent working through the zone implementation programs in Waimakariri and Otop zones, and the time that they have spent considering and developing recommendations that were eventually developed into Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2. Once notified, Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2 were released for public consultation. 588 submissions were received. 560 of those were on Plan Change 7. Council appointed an independent hearings panel to hear and consider those submissions and spent 75 hours of hearing time hearing and considering those submissions. Now, when I said that Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2 took a whole community, I meant that. There was also an internal ECAN community of staff that worked it really hard to support that community. Now I'm going to call out some names, first names only, but just to give you an idea, Olivia, Lakeel, Tavisha, Dan, Shirley, Amber, Zed, Maureen, Andrea, Craig, Lynn, Alistair, Meredith, Murray, and a number of other people all spent um, years working on developing Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2. And it wasn't just internal ECAN staff. We were ably supported by our Tangata Whenua Advisory Services, by staff at Insight, by staff at Wynn Williams to develop those, um, uh, the, the plan change itself and support the hearings panel. 
Our paper today has recommendations within it. Those recommendations recommend that the council adopts the recommendations on Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2 as your decision. As part of the, um, the report that we've brought to you today, you also have in that agenda pack a copy of the recommendation and the relevant appendices developed by the Independent Hearings Panel. I'd also like to draw out the importance of Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2 as a step forward in terms of the future work program that ECAN is developing. Um, as you know, councillors, we are working towards development, developing an integrated Kiyutukitai framework for the Canterbury region. Plan Change 7 is a really important step forward and a big assistance in terms of us moving towards delivering to Manarote Wai in the Canterbury region. You will see the recommendations on page 26 and 27 of, of your agenda pack. As Chair Huey has already noted, there will be a media release released after this meeting. I look forward to your debate on this important issue. I'm now going to hand over to Philip Moore, who's going to speak through um, the, the decision making process that you have now. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. In terms of the decision that you are facing uh, this morning, uh, possibly uh, this afternoon, in relation to the recommendations uh, that have been made by the independent panel, uh, your decision uh, is essentially a binary decision. And by binary decision, what I mean is that uh, the choice is simply one of adopting the recommendations uh, as the Council's decision uh, decisions on submissions on Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2, uh, or rejecting the recommendations, uh, the outcome of which would be that Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2 would be uh, withdrawn and the planning framework would revert back to that uh, which existed uh, approximately 2016. Whilst there might be, uh, might be some uh, temptation to uh, pick and choose uh, individual recommendations from uh, within the reports, uh, any uh, process which adopted uh, that type of approach uh, would be susceptible to uh, significant legal risk. Uh, and so the uh, decision is essentially a binary decision uh, for you to make as you uh, consider the totality of the recommendation reports. Uh, now that's uh, that's all that I wanted to note uh, in terms of decision making. So uh, we are happy to answer any questions that may have arisen uh, with respect to the uh, reports uh, as we're able to, uh, and then uh, leave you to your uh, consideration of the, re the recommendation report. Well, uh, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, Philip. Uh, have we got any questions, Councillor Elizabeth McKenzie? Sorry. Um, yes, I have a question. Um, I note that the hearings commissioners don't explicitly mention climate change in their decision, and I just wondered if you could um, explain how climate change has been taken into account um, in this process. Uh, kia ora, Councillor. Um, I'm happy to step through uh, a response to that uh, question, and there are a few layers uh, in terms of the response, so I shall uh, do my best. Um, the starting point uh, to consider is that the recommendation report that has been prepared by the uh, independent panel needs to be considered in its totality. And by that, I mean that the narrative report uh, that uh, you read uh, needs to be considered together with the decisions table, which uh, I think a page count got to something like 850 odd pages. Uh, all of that needs to be considered as the uh, recommendation report. When you look at the uh, appendix, I think it's appendix A, which uh, steps through the individual decisions on uh, submissions, uh, there are a series of submissions that raised the question of climate change and how Plan Change 7 sought to uh, address the potential effects associated with future climate change. In addressing those submissions, the hearing panel has set out some reasons for recommendations uh, in uh, the column on the right-hand side. Uh, and in response, 
the submissions that uh, we're referring to climate change uh, have been referred to as submissions that did not seek any precise relief or any direct changes to the plan. But the reasons go a little further and, and go on to note that the uh, reasons set out in the Council Officer's Section 42A reports have been adopted with respect to the approach to climate change. And so there is a cross-reference within the decision back to the Section 42A report, and that, um, just for uh, completeness, includes both the 42A report prepared at the beginning of the hearings and also the 42A report uh, that was prepared in reply. An analysis of each of those 42A reports indicates that there were a number of references to the effects of climate change and recognition of the effects of climate change having been taken into account when the flow and allocation regimes were being established for the various rivers uh, that were being considered uh, in Plan Change 7 in particular. That theme of considering the effects of climate change uh, was also picked up in the Section 42A reply report and the independent uh, hearing commissioners asked the council officers to respond to some evidence uh, of uh, a Dr Kerr who was giving evidence for a submitter in relation to the climate change impact on observed data with respect to inflows into Lake Opua. In the council officers reply, uh, again, further information was provided in relation to uh, the impacts of climate change uh, on that flow data and the likelihood of changes occurring. Uh, and further evidence was given as to how the planning framework, particularly the flow and allocation plan, would respond to those issues. Uh, and in short, uh, and I can give you the uh, paragraph reference, 2316 and 2317 of the reply report, the officers again noted that because of the way the uh, flow regimes were being constructed, the effects of climate change would not be borne by the uh, river or the rivers in question, uh, but rather it would affect the uh, volumes of water that could be abstracted. Uh, in simple terms, the minimum flows don't get lower as a result of climate change. Uh, if anything, there may be less water to abstract because those minimum flows would kick in earlier. The hearing panels, uh, having considered the evidence that was given, then accepted uh, that evidence with respect to the effects of uh, climate change, and uh, that is the link uh, that can be drawn from the narrative report, including then the appendices and picking up on the evidence that uh, has been adopted and accepted by the panel. Uh, thank you, Philip. Uh, did you want to follow up with anything, Councillor McKenzie? Uh, was there any other questions people had about the us or anything to do with the reports? All right. Well, I think there's not any further questions. So um, thank you very much, Andrew, and thank you very much for Philip. Uh, we'll move on with the recommendations. So um, we're up to, we'll, first of all, we'll adopt um, recommendation one. It's up on the screen, but I'll read it out um, so that the council receives the report and recommendations of the independent hearing commissioners on the provisions of and submissions on proposed plan change seven to the, the Canterbury Land and Water Regional Plan and proposed plan change two to the Waimakariri River Regional Plan comprising the following parts. Bullet point one, report and recommendations of the hearing commissioners, which is an attachment one. Bullet point two, appendix A, part one, recommendations on submissions received on plan change seven, which is an appendix two. Bullet point three, Appendix A, Part two, recommendations on submission points received on Plan Change two, Appendix three. Bullet point four, Appendix B, Part one, recommended Plan Change seven provisions in Attachment four. The next bullet point, Appendix B, Part two, recommended Plan Change two provisions, Attachment five. The next bullet point, Appendix B, Part 3, Recommendated Plan Change 7, Map Volume, which is Attachment 6. And the final bullet point is Appendix B, Part 4, Recommended Plan Change 2, Map Volume, Attachment 7. Uh, I'll take that as moved by Councillor John Sunkel and seconded by Councillor Grant Edge. Um, 
is there any discussion around the accept, accepting the receiving the reports? I don't imagine there is, so I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, please say aye. That's carried. Um, there being nobody against. Thank you very much. Now we're going to move on to um, moving and seconding um, recommendation two and three. I'll read them out. The first one is recommendation two adopts the report and recommendations of the hearing commissioners as set out in appendix one to seven as the council's decision on the provisions of and submissions on the proposed plan change seven to the Canterbury Land and Water Regional Plan in accordance with clauses 10.1 10.2, 10.4, A of Schedule 1 to the Resource Management Act of 1991 and Clause 4, which I'm going to move the two together. Um, oh, 3, sorry. Adopts the report and recommendations of the hearing commissioners in brackets as set out in the attachments 1 to 7 as the Council's decision on the provisions and submissions on proposed plan change to the Waimakariri River Regional Plan in accordance with clauses 10 1, 10 2, 10 4, AAA of Schedule 1 to the Resource Management Act 1991. So we're moving those two together. Does it make sense to move the fourth one, Catherine? Can I just ask the Catherine for it? Shall I move four together? We'll move four together with that one. I'll read that out. Um, can we just can we get four up there or not? Shall I read it from here? Okay. Resolves in accordance uh, with clause 10, 4 in brackets B of Schedule 1 to the Resource Management Act 1991 to publicly notify on the 20th of November 2021. Clause 4.1, the Council decision on the provisions and submissions on proposed plan change 7 and the Canterbury Land and Water Regional Plan and 4.2, the Council's decision on the provisions of and submissions on proposed plan change 2 to the Waimakariri River Regional Plan. That is moved by Councillor John Sunkel and seconded by Councillor John Edge. Um, um, Grant Edge, sorry, sorry Grant. Um, now we'll open that up for debate. Would you like to speak first, Councillor Sunkel? Over to you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. <laughs> and I'm, I'm pleased to, to move uh, this motion. Um, for me, this is a, a monumental piece of work that has been, as, as Andrew Parrish has indicated, years in the making and is probably the last significant piece of work that we're doing in this planning space by, by the bulk of what it is. And in my conversation with Andrew, I, um, I, I concur that this is probably the most significant piece of work, particularly in, in Canterbury, other than, I guess, government regulation that is coming through essential fresh water in Tamana Otawai, uh, given um, the outcomes that we're seeking to achieve, uh, the effects that will be, uh, I guess, felt by the farmers and growers and others out in the community. So I just really want to highlight the significance of this piece of work and the challenges that uh, many will face. If we move to part uh, PC7 and, and part A, uh, there are a number of provisions in there which are, are catch-ups for, for issues that kind of fell through the cracks or were unintended consequences. And I briefly mentioned um, a, a change to vegetable growing uh, conditions under under the, the previous rules that we had, which did not allow for, I guess, agronomic processes to work where, where we needed or growers needed to transfer their crops around for, for really good reasons. So we've achieved that outcome. Um, Naitahu values and considerations equally in that part. We now have a, a greater ability to take into consideration the, the values of Naitahu and Mauridum in the consideration of, of plans in our future work. And the Hines Drains Working Party is uh, a piece of work in, in the Hines District where I guess good outcomes were being done by a community that were providing great environmental outcomes, but ran into, I guess, the bureaucracy of what could or could not be achieved. So again, um, this instrument allows that work to continue, and I thank all those involved in, in bringing that forward. And equally, salmon spawning and recreational fishing and the like. So that has tidied up issues that have, I guess, um, been challenging for us over the last six or seven years that have fallen into cracks or, or not quite been consistent. And then we move to um, OTOP, uh, that area um, to the south of us. 
and the real challenges and, and instruments that will be put in place there, particularly around nutrient uh, reductions and the requirements for those to provide uh, really good outcomes, uh, farm environment plans and, and the challenges that sit with that. Uh, we are increasing the flows in our streams and rivers down there, which obviously means reduced takes and irrigation. So again, uh, some real challenges for those farmers and growers in that space. Uh, but the balance of the Commission and the, and the others who have submitted have, uh, have taken us to that point uh, to, to improve those environmental outcomes. Uh, equally, some flow rates around the Opua Dam and into those rivers. So again, um, environmental outcomes and, and challenges to those who were in, in that community and utilising. I also note uh, Matai Tai and stock exclusion rules around more sensitive areas uh, where we can uh, improve again the environmental outcomes and the challenges of stock in, in those uh, catchments uh, to provide really good uh, outcomes and things that have been, uh, I guess, promoted by Naitahu and Runanga as, as outcomes that they've wished to see, along with winter grazing uh, rules. So there will be real challenges for those folk in those communities if they are farmers and growers over time. But equally, uh, we will see environmental outcomes which will pick us up and take us towards where we need to be in 2024. And if I move to uh, to Waimakariri, uh, equally uh, we have increased and, and the nutrient losses required by 2024, which will create further challenges for, for folk in that environment. Uh, we have put in place, if we adopt this, uh, higher flows conditions in our rivers and streams within their catchment, again providing um, environmental outcomes. Uh, winter grazing around the year Ashley Estuary and other areas, again, looking to reduce the nutrient loss of sedimentation and a whole bunch of things, again, creating environmental outcomes and equally creating challenges for those, those farmers and growers in that space. So real challenges for the folk that are, I guess, on, on the end of, of these rules and instruments that we are putting in place, but equally really good environmental outcomes as a step through to where we need to go. So those, there will be those that uh, believe we are not going far enough, fast enough or hard enough. There will be those who would like to see uh, some of the essential freshwater Tamana Otorai Wai rules uh, put into play. Those things were quite clearly out of scope in this planning process. So while some things are indicated in there, um, those challenges will be uh, seen to as we develop those instruments that we're required to put in place by 2024. So we could well describe this, as Andrew Parrish has said, as, as a, a, a step along the way, the creating of a foundation towards where we need to go and, and setting a standard. So with all these actions in place, um, we will be moving significantly forward. And as I said, this is probably the most significant piece of work done in Canterbury other than government intervention. So finally, I would like to thank uh, Andrew Parrish and, and the planning team, the science, um, all those that sat out in the community working with the zone committees, our staff, um, the zone committees themselves for the time. And having been through that in the cell in Waihora, I absolutely understand the challenges of reaching a position for a zipper, which then gets translated into, into a forming, formal planning document. They are challenging times. They are collaborative processes. You gift and gain, you reach a space. So to the staff, to the zone committees, to the community that have fed into those conversations uh, with real passion, uh, really engaging in the debate to industry and all those other involves uh, a severe thanks from my behalf as a governor to reaching this point today. So with those words, I am pleased to uh, to move this motion and believe it is a, a really significant piece of work that this council can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sunkel. Um, Councillor Edge, would you like to speak next? Yes, I would. Thanks, Chair, and thanks to um, Andrew and John for your comments. This PC7 decision has been a very long time in the making. For me, uh, being involved with the Waimakariri Zone Committee from its inception in 2009 to 2018, um, so a journey with a lot of people. Huge commitments have been made by community zone committees to deliver their recommendations to council. Recommendations were derived through consensus and consideration of economic, social, cultural and environmental issues. 
And being on the Y Macquarie Zone Committee for some time, my support was especially for delivery of the non statutory measures and while considering the voices concerned about the economic impacts. Slow progress has been made on improving water quality, regenerating biodiversity and fostering land use changes to reduce environmental degradation. PC7 does strengthen environmental protections and measures such as increasing flows and in rivers and reducing allocation limits, which should result in improvements to water quality. Although timeframes have been shortened to action change faster, the panel considers that these are achievable and not impossible. In Waimakariri, the panel have revised stage reductions in nitrogen in the nitrate priority area, and this is the most intensive dairy farming area on the lightest, most permeable soils in Waimakariri and in the zone of influence of probable nitrate leaching into the Canterbury, uh, into the Christchurch drinking water aquifers. Actual measurements of, from some wells indicate nitrate levels are continuing to rise. And that with some concern um, about the modelling, the panel has deleted reduction percentages from 2040 onwards. They instead require five yearly reports on monitoring, more modelling, and further investigations that will better inform any future planning measures that might be necessary to bring those levels down. In my view, this is a red flag for land use activity in both subregions, and change is inevitable. I'm particularly concerned about the new policy and rules concerning the managed aquifer recharge and targeted stream augmentation. Both tools are designed to dilute the effects of land use pollution on water quality and monitoring to evaluate um, the effects of groundwater on, on groundwater ecology and drinking water quality as a result of the mixing of waters doesn't appear to be included in the preconditions assessment process. PC7 only has a short lifespan and by 2024 Environment Canterbury will have notified a new plan that will need to deliver the requirements of the NPS Freshwater 2020 and to give effect to Tamana Otawai previously indicated, of course, in the NPS 2017. Um, it will need to work with Tangata Whenua to determine what that means in terms of a future vision for our waterways and environment. An ECAM will be required to apply the hierarchy of obligations. Firstly, the health and well-being of water bodies and freshwater ecosystems. Second, the health needs of people, such as drinking water. Third, the ability of people and communities to provide for their social, economic and cultural well-being now and in the future. The window of opportunity to reset a different path before 2024 is now. And climate change impacts like floods, drought, wind, fire, pest, plant and animal and diseases affecting our productive communities are likely to become more frequent and will require adaptive management. In my opinion, bespoke catchment scale solutions in association with freshwater farm plans are a good way of promoting change. PC7 will be tough for many, but our rural economy and communities will survive. This is not the death of dairying, just a resetting of the balance. The panel have given effect to NPS 2020 where they could. Some submitters were clearly seeking more economic relief. Conversely, others thought the PC7 didn't go far enough. Many submissions were considered out of scope by the panel, and others were rejected where it was unclear as to what they were seeking. The panel were very supportive of the Section 42A report and the corresponding reply report in their findings. They adopted a cautious approach in their recommendations to ensure that all submitters' voices and arguments were considered fairly. And on balance at this time and the progress towards improved environmental outcomes, this PC7 and the proposed amendments to the Canterbury Regional Land and Water Plan has my support. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ed. Uh, who would like to speak next? I've got an indication, Councillor Lan Farm. Kia ora, thanks, Chair. Um, 
yeah, I too want to echo uh, Andrew's words about thanking the community. Um, I had the pleasure of being on the OTOP committee uh, between 2016 and 2019 when, um, yeah, things were really rocking and rolling in terms of um, Plan Change 7. And I really want to acknowledge specifically John Talbot, who was the chair of OTOP, uh, followed by Hamish McFarlane, and also uh, the late Mandy walker Home, who made a great contribution to uh, where the plan change got to. Um, Andrew's rattled off, you know, a bunch of stuff, and we know that there's just so many people behind that, but I just want to specifically name um, a few in the OTOP patch as well to just really give credit to the huge amount um, of work that has gone into this. Um, so Andrew, yourself, obviously, Lynn, Dan, Shirley, Craig, Lockheel, Barb, Peter, and Olivia. Um, just, yeah, I just saw so much of their commitment and going above and beyond their jobs um, every day and weekends and evenings and everything in between. Um, I also really want to acknowledge my council colleagues who had significant involvement in Plan Change 7, including uh, Peter Scott, Claire Mackay and Grant Edge. Um, these processes can and did take their toll on both the community councillors uh, and staff. And like any process, there has been lessons learnt, um, but we can carry forward those lessons into our new planning framework, which is already in development. In short, my view is uh, this plan change simply does not go far enough to protect human and ecosystem health or adequately uphold cultural values. I remain uh, totally dismayed and uncomfortable that we continue to allow the short-term profits of a select few to pollute the drinking water of an entire city. But we're here today where, as Phil has pointed out, we have this binary decision of adopting or rejecting, and we cannot go backward to lower minimum flows and less stringent rules on pollution. We must absolutely go forward. Um, and as it has been said, although I'm one of the many who thinks this, the measures and rules in this plan don't go far enough, they go some way and continue a direction of travel. So I will absolutely be supporting Plan Change 7 and Plan Change 2 today. Uh, my main reflection, though, in that support is a hope that this will be the last relic of the way we used to do things, a time when we had flawed ideas about how we could balance the environment with the economy. Where Runanga were just one or two voices around a table, and where we measured economic impacts on individuals and businesses without consideration of wider externalities and cost to society. But thankfully, this is not our future. Um, as has been touched on, we now have clear statutory obligations to Te Mana o Te wai, and the appropriate hierarchy of putting the mana of the water first above our human needs. We have clear processes to co-design our planning framework alongside our Papatapurunanga partners, and we're starting to understand, even through the likes of our COVID challenges, the true cost to society when we fail to prioritise human and ecosystem health above all else. I'm really looking forward to our new planning framework progressing, and my hope is that the accepting of this plan change today signals this is just another step in the huge journey we need to urgently press on with if we are to provide our kids, grandkids and future generations with even a remotely functional environment. So kia ora. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Farm. Um, have I got a further speaker? Councillor Elizabeth McKenzie. Um, yes, so I should probably just give a bit of background. I was very new on the scene in uh, August 2019 when I arrived and hadn't heard of Plan Change 7 until a reporter asked me, what did I think of Plan Change 7? So I rushed off and read it. Um, and, and I said, oh, actually, it looks really good, um, except it doesn't really go far enough on the, on the nitrates. Um, and so here we are um, with the, uh, the final decision. Um, and much like Lan, um, there are areas I'm not happy with. Um, there are many deficiencies. 
the managed aquifer recharge um, is simply a band-aid solution, as I see it. Um, the nitrate levels aren't going as fast um, down as, as they should be to protect the drinking water for Christchurch. Um, but we need to look at the plan in its entirety and consider whether it's in the interests of all of the people of Canterbury. And overall, we gain more in environmental benefits from this plan than we lose. So I think Plan Change 7 is a move in the right direction. Um, but it's a really good example of how slow our bureaucratic systems are in responding to environmental problems. Um, you know, 10 to 15 years to respond to an environmental problem. Um, so, yeah, while I, while I do support this plan, um, I am disappointed um, that we cannot respond as quickly as we can um, or as, as stringently as we can. Um, but many of these provisions um, that we've got here and many of the things that the Hearings Commission has said to address, um, you know, wherever they, they have, they have, they've made nitrate limits more stringent, for example. Um, they have they have tried to actually improve the original plan. And so I think overall, um, I think, it, you know, it's it's a good plan at this point. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor McKenzie. Um, have I got a further speaker? Councillor Nicole Marshall. Kia ora, thank you, Chair. Um, so today's decision is the culmination of years upon years of hard work. I know staff within Environment Canterbury, both past and present, um, have endured many long, long days, sleepless nights and too few times of triumph to get to where we are today. Uh, the same can be said for our community members and organisations who were involved in both the drafting of these plan changes and the subsequent hearing processes, from those who pose that the proposed re regulations go far too far and those who think they don't go far enough. Um, to everyone who has contributed or supported others in getting us to where we are today, I say thank you. Aroha mai. It is through the involvement of hundreds of people from across Canterbury and beyond that can give us faith in the process and to trust in the and trust in the recommendations from the hearing panel. I also want to acknowledge the hearing panel, not only for their recommendations, but for the clarity with which they put them forth. Um, the summary report makes for really clear reading, very clear flows of logic that arrive at well-reasoned recommendations. Um, the appendices address each and every submission point, and that validates the efforts of our submitters and the time that they put in to participating in this process. The recommendation report makes um, a couple of really strong foreshadowing statements that I want to reinforce. We cannot expect the regime in which we work to remain unchanged. The tools within the plan changes will not be sufficient to achieve the 2020 National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management, National Bottom Lines, and in many cases, land use change is likely required. And that has huge threatening implications for many of our communities, but is a topic that we as a region and as a nation must confront sooner rather than later. We know we cannot continue as we've always done and expect both environment and society to flourish. This plan change is a step towards the direction that has been set by central government, but much more work needs to be done by us with mana whenua and our communities to achieve this and shape a thriving and resilient Canterbury now and for future generations. Toitu te marae o tāne. Toitu te marae o tangaroa. Toitu te iwi. Today's decision is the choice between the status quo or more regulation. Regulation that steps us towards where we need to be and that honours the efforts of individuals and groups and the ratepayer money that has been spent to reach today. 
Uh, endorsing the recommendations locks in the proposed changes, which will see reductions of nutrient discharges and enhanced river flows, among a lot of other things, which I think Councillor Sunkel did a fantastic job of highlighting. Um, while we continue to work towards December 2024 notification of a planning framework that gives effect to the entirety of the national policy statement for freshwater management for the entire region, and that's huge. We still don't have a, re a sub regional rules that cover the entire region, and, and now we're hoping to do it all again within three years. And I'm excited for the journey and going on the journey with everyone here and not here. Um, kia ora, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be involved in this process, and I'm looking forward to landing this today, hopefully. Uh, thank you, Nicole Marshall. Uh, who else would like to speak? Councillor Craig Pauling. Uh, I totally um, can't do it to me. Uh, kia koto na uh, kaimahi uh, o tēnei mahere. Uh, ai, ki nga um, ai, ki nga memo o uh, na na awa o waimakariri uh, o opahi. Um, ai, uh, tēnei to me kia koto mo koto mahi tēnei tēnei kaupapa. Um, so just first of all, just like others, just acknowledging uh, the massive amount of uh, time and energy and effort it takes to pull um, bunches of words together <laughs> uh, into into documents that try to help um, manage our natural, our complex natural systems. Um, it's not easy. <laughs> um, you know, having been involved in these things myself, not this particular um, planning process, but of course others. Um, it's definitely a challenge. So I acknowledge that the people that have um, have led that work, uh, have advocated for things, have submitted against and for things. Um, you know, everybody's contribution uh, is important. Um, and yeah, it's it's all it's all told in the in the hearing commissioners' reports um, and how that flows out. You know, to hear seventy five hours of hearings, of course, we know that probably means triple, quadruple that in terms of deliberating and and uh, working through those things. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a massive effort. Um, like many, um, I'm concerned about the the state of our waterways, of course, uh, our freshwater biodiversity, our water quality, our water quantity, um, you know, and what what state they're in and what has uh, what we've done to them. Um, and I'm impatient to see um, improvement, uh, protection, enhancement uh, of our unique uh, water bodies and the things that live within them. Um, but, and I know we have a, a further way to go. Um, if we're going to achieve the aspirations that we've set ourselves as a nation um, with Tamana or Te Wai, um, like others, I'm glad though that that opportunity is coming. Um, um, but also, yeah, I'm, I'm a pragmatic person <laughs> and like others, um, I can see that the work that's been put in, that the hours of effort, the, the debates um, and where things have landed has definitely taken us a step in the right direction. And so for that, um, I, I support um, the plan changes that were put in front of us. Um, of course, we must always do something. We must not stand still. We must take action. Uh, we must consistently um, assess ourselves, uh, our regimes, our frameworks, our policies, um, and make change where we need to. Yes, it happens so slowly sometimes, Elizabeth, <laughs> um, but also we must do something. And that's why you know, our decision here today uh, as a council is to decide whether to uh, accept this or reject it. Um, but yeah, like, like others have said, this definitely brings us um, more stringent rules around those things that are really important, the issues we know are affecting our waterways. Um, so for that, yeah, again, I support this. So tēnā uh, Thank you, Councillor Pauling. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Tēnā uh, tāia, Yvette Couch Lewis. Oh, 
Um, kia ora. Um, Andrew, you're right. It does take a community for a plan change to um, to be implemented. And for me, it is um, you know thanking that community, thanking the staff, and also thanking the commissioners in terms of looking and deliberating um, at the issues that are in front of us. We will never always be happy with the outcome that comes from a decision. There will be some matters that will not give us the solution that we're all hoping for, but it does give us a foundation. And you're right, Craig, we do have to keep moving. And I think that this plan change and all of the, deci the decision today will give some certainty out there in the community in terms of being able to, because they have put so much work into this plan change, that it will give some certainty in terms of being able to move forward. For me, yes, I did read that there is a lot of work that has been done in terms of wanting to take into consideration Naitahu values. Even I burrowed in quite deeply trying to find where there might be a little gap that I could look at. But then event, what would you do with that gap? Um, so, you know, I stand by the decision of those commissioners because I know how hard it, the, the mahi that they would have done. So for me, if I wanted to burrow down, it is that it's actually given us a foundation to go forward. You know, we have taken major steps within the Tangata Whenua space and Mana Whenua space. Take heart from that. And that is what I have seen a bit of in this document. It has given us heart. It has given us the ability to be able to start to move forward towards to Manaru, to Wai, and that national policy fresh water statement. We are going into a time of change. And I think this is one of the last planning documents that we have in the old regime that's come so far. Now let's all walk together into the new framework and let these changes take us forward. So on that matter, I fully support the recommendations of the commissioners. Kia ora. Uh, thank you, Yvette. Um, now, Yayan, um, Tumutaya Yayan Cranwell, would you like to speak? I need the media. Kia ora. 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 Koto mahi, a Faka Hairi, Tene Mahi, Mainga Wai Mua, Tayatuki Tene Wa. Um, just acknowledging as everyone has before the staff. Um, Andrew knows we I sat around the table from 216 to 219. Um, probably mostly frustrated uh, um, during during this process because uh, reiterating the the Fakaro of um Arofenua Runanga and Aitua Hurudi um, regarding PC uh, PC seven and PC plan change two. Um, and Lance reiterated it qu quite well. Uh, in a sense, probably we didn't think this had gone far enough, especially in the cultural cultural area. Um, listening to the the dreams and aspirations of of especially Arofenua down in the Otop region uh, regarding overallocation and the frustration of seeing um, that overallocation and not being able to do much or not being able to um, get much change. Um, I mean, the one things regarding the Waipuna and the Springs and also the, the protection of rock art and making that uh, public and, and getting that area um, looked at and those values secured, um, that has been a positive. And also in the Waimakariri area with the Tiakaaka uh, and the protection in those zones there. But uh, probably I didn't think it had gone far enough. Um, and also just regarding the the commissioners uh, caught it all regarding the Ruatani Fire, the Rakahuri, and the Silver Stream, you know, because they were talking about reserve and allocation for Mahinga Kai. Um, I know it was even over allocated area, but in a sense, they just wanted to, they're frustrated to see that areas over allocation, there's nothing that can be done for 
Mahinga Kai and the, and the uh, protection and enhancement of that of that area. So by saying uh, um, getting allocation for Mahinga Kai was really allocation for the river, because seeing the river uh, making sure and that in a sense um, now with MPS fresh water to Manor or to Wai, um, first order priority is actually the, the health of the river. So in a sense, the Runanga were being proactive and showing their leadership um, by uh, having that concept there, that having allocation for the river because the health and the ecological values and cultural values of the river are very important. Um, but this is a stepping stone. Uh, you know, we need to make changes. Uh, this is a stepping stone for changes. And then, as, as has already been said, uh, 2024 with the integrated management plan and a new planning framework where mana whenua will be an integral part uh part partnership be a part of that uh the planning pr framework i really look forward to that so in a sense support support the plan change seven and plan change two uh, i believe it hadn't gone far enough but it's you know stepping stone moving forward and onwards and upwards uh, thank you um tumutai young cranwell so I just might make a, a, a comment now. Um, I'd like to also go back to the start that Andrew acknowledged all the staff and everybody else involved. It's jolly hard work doing all this stuff. And unfortunately for the state of our planet, it takes us a long time in these bureaucracies to get there. Somehow we have to change that. We have to be able to do these processes in a more smart and more fast manner. Otherwise, the human health of everyone will be more affected than it is now. So I see this as a step in a journey, a bit like our councillor, um, Tumutaya, Yvette Couch Lewis has just explained. It's part of a journey. It's towards achieving a framework that will give further and better effect to what we need to change in protecting our environment under the new national uh, policy statement on fresh water, which, as with someone else has acknowledged, we, is going to be changed by 2020. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to an integrated planning process to further the application of the principles under Tanan or to Y, because I sincerely believe this will enable a more innovative intergenerational thinking to protect and restore our water bodies and the ecosystems in them for the future. And that's really what we're tasked with moving forward. We need to highlight that we're making this decision at a time when our planet is in a terrible emergency. The entire ecosystem is in a horrific state. The plan change illustrates the controversy that is in our, embedded in our community around the protection and restoration of our environment and economic factors for our livelihood. This is a sad time, on the one hand, to be living and, and making these decisions when we know that everybody has to be involved because we all have to work collaboratively in going forward. And I truly believe that the commissioners have done quite a fantastic job here alongside all the staff and all the community who contributed to getting there because it's an illustration of what work we have to do more of as we go forward. But as I've already said, we need to speed that up. And as the commissioners acknowledged in their report, it showed very clearly both sides of the controversy. Um, Narudanga and, and, and a large range of other organisations and individuals wanted things to speed up. They wanted us to reduce the nitrogen and other polluting elements going into our water systems at a faster speed, whereas a lot of people, and particularly uh, the dairy industry and farmers, felt like this uh, plan change seven in particular was going too far too fast but as the commissioner said we can't stay static i didn't actually use that word but a similar words what we need is a balanced approach and i think they've achieved that they've set the they've set the limits and it will be a challenge for some people but i'm sure in the end that will work towards a more sustainable environment and as we go go um further down this track. Um, we need to protect our water, um, otherwise our human health, as I've already said, will be worse off. So I'd just like to make one further comment, and because everybody's said everything really, but in terms of the city aquifers, the panel considered the submissions from the Christchurch City Council and the individuals that argued for further reduction in groundwater um, 
input in the north of the Wainakariri River because it is the source, it affects the source of the aquifers which supply the fresh water to the Christchurch uh, drinking system. And they didn't want, they want to avoid having to remove nitrates in the future. In that regard, this, the panel has taken a fantastic step, I believe. They were very innovative. They stuck their necks out in a way because they've outlined a policy that further reductions will be informed by ongoing monitoring and modelling and investigations in the Waimakariri sub-region. I think that's very a very excellent outcome because it enables a way for people to hold to account the regional council and whatever other council it might look like in the future uh, to ensure that we are doing well informed adaptive planning as we go forward and i want to draw everybody's attention to the orders at 8.4.35 of the um, orders in the waimakariri zone so i congratulate the panel for this truly insightful intergenerational thinking given the constraints of the aero. So thank you to them. Overall, I support the recommendations of the hearing commissioners, and I truly thank everyone for their work because it's really hard work, as I said at the start. And just what we have to do is look for more innovative ways. And like someone's already said, there were lessons learned. We need to learn them and we need to apply to mana or to way or to why with everybody putting water first. So thank you very much for the report and I commend the report to everybody. So is there anybody else that's missed out speaking who wishes to speak? All right, well, I'm going to put that resolution then. That's moved by Councillor John Sunkel, seconded by Councillor Grant Edge, and we are moving on, on your um, your resolution sheet. It's resolution two, three and four. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. There's anybody against? They're not being anybody against. That's carried. Thank you very much, everybody. I better go back. Now, I, I think we have to do some like stamping up here, me and um, Stephanie. So we'd better do that now. Um, We've got the stamp organised, so you can watch watch while we stamp and hope the stamp works. It's the it's the seed. All right, thank you very much, everybody, and the people with conflicts. I see you've pulled your chairs up. Thank you very much um, for staying in the room. That was very helpful. Uh, we're up to item eight point two, which is the circulated. Um, report on the Regional Transport Committee and I'd like to ask Peter Scott, Councillor Peter Scott, to make a comment. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for making uh, the space available for this late item. Uh, and the reason it was not on the agenda uh, that it missed the uh, close of business on the 11th of November um, after the agenda was published. And the reason th this item is important for us to resolve is that uh, this is a matter around the Regional Transport Committee, uh, and we have a meeting on the 18th of November, which we would like to confirm uh, the NTTA representative at that. Uh, the previous NTTA representative was Jim Harland, who is now the CEO of Waimakariri uh, District Council, and James Cagle uh, took over his position as, um, RT, as, as the Wakakataki representative that uh, can sit on the RTC Committee on, on August. And there's been a bit of a oversight in terms of getting that letter of confirmation. We now have that letter of confirmation, which is attached uh, from the CEO of uh, Wakatahi, Nicola Ro uh, Nicole Rosie, uh, which is attached to your document. So I'd just like to move to um, the recommendations that one accept the late item of business uh, on the 17th of November 2021 council meeting, that being the, the letter, and confirm that Jane, James Cagle. That's the Waka Katahi New Zealand Transport Agency representative on the Canberra Regional Transport. So I'll move that, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Peter Scott. That's moved by Councillor Scott. Peter Scott, seconded by Councillor Tane Apanui. Uh, is there anybody that would like to speak further to that report or ask a question? Uh, there being nobody, I'll put it to the vote. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. Uh, anybody against? There being nobody against, that's carried. Thank you very much. Now we're going to move into um, public excluded. Um, we will have to close down the um, 
the people online, you'll be excluded, and anybody else in the room. Uh, I'll move uh, uh, that we uh, move to exclude the public into public excluded, seconded by Councillor Claire Mackay. All those in favour, please say aye. That's carried. Thank you very much. We're in public excluded now. Thank you very much. Now we're back into open meeting, everybody. We've just got to go through these couple of things and um, uh, any other business, there not being any other business that I've been notified of, that's good. I don't know of any notices of motion that we're dealing with. Uh, there's no um, questions on notice, so we're moving on to the date of the next meeting, which is the 25th of November 2021, and I would like to invite, uh, invite Councillor Craig Falling to close the meeting for us. Kia ora tātou. Uh, a kanu i te, te mihi ki a koutou, a mō koutou mahi tēnei, tēnei rā. Uh, ai, he, ka, uh, he nui te, te mahi i tēnei uh, kaupapa o te, te māheri o nga awa. Um, ai, tēnei te mihi ki a koutou. So, um, yeah, just again, just acknowledging us for the, the monumental stuff we did today around uh, Plan Change 7, Plan Change 2. Um, yeah. Um, acknowledging again all the amazing work that's gone in and um, glad to see that that done. Um, I hear Karakia Fakamutungo Tatu Nehui, Akia Tau, Na Manaki Tango, Na Me Karo, Kironga Kitena Kiteno Tatu, Komahia to Hu Makiki, Kia Toy Tareo, Kia Toy to Mana, Kia Toy to Aroha, Tutu to Fakamo, Kia Tina, Omi Huye. Well, thank you. Thank you, Craig. We're shutting down now, everybody online.